To be the best, the best of the best. That's what I want to be. And I always wanted to be world champion. And uh, I mean, I never really took an interest in road racing until I was I started, which was I was 18 years old. And I used to think, God, these guys are good. But I actually could see myself doing it one day and actually beating them. Suzuka circuit is actually owned by Honda and it's also the first Grand Prix to be held in Japan for 20 years. Because I've won 9 out of the 10 races here, the Japanese people expect a lot of me. In fact, I'm so popular here that I'm even treated like a rock star. I'm always being mobbed by fans and they've even written a book about me. There's a lot of pressure on me here to win. I think this has made being in Japan difficult for me to comprehend really and keep it all in perspective. This is the longest season in motorcycle history and Japan is the first round of 15. That's 15 races in 15 countries with seven months on the road. Catch him, yeah? We'll try harder and crash. And I thought, oh, okay, there we go. Randy seemed to the same ball when he slowed up and yeah, thought he was something to catch, catch him. Yeah. Took off as hard as he could and crashed. It's exactly the same, you gotta set it out. Yeah, Hopefully. you can only do your own pace. I was disappointed to come second, but it was great to be out there racing again. Besides, it's the beginning of the season and there's still 14 races to go. You know, when I haven't been racing for a while, or it's been the off-season, uh, I get really grumpy and Donna tells me, she said, oh, you got to go back racing soon because I just get really frustrated and really grumpy just sitting around doing nothing and I take it out on Donna and all the people around me. But I can't help it. I mean, as I say, I'm, I kind of need, need in a certain manner of speaking a fix, you know, I need to go racing and I need to uh, the thrill and the excitement and the power and the speed of it all. I mean, I like racing that much. I'd go racing for nothing, to tell you the truth. I'd race for nothing. It's taken me 10 years now to become Honda's number one factory rider, and this means I've been given two of the best bikes and all the facilities Honda can offer. The machine has been developed as a two-way thing, really, between Honda and myself, so the bike has literally been made for me. It weighs about uh, 120 kilos, which is very light, and it's got about 165 brake horsepower. It uh, has a six-speed transmission with about 
42 different variety of ratios for the gearbox. In fact, we can actually gear it to 160 kilometres an hour in first gear. So it's a very, very complicated machine. I suppose the fastest I've been on my bikes this year was about 310 kilometres an hour. The bike is capable of about 340, but of course the circuits don't permit that. Do you, do you feel all right through that section? Do you feel you're going through there all right? Uh, I feel slow. Oh, well, often that's the way, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've got a watch on Eddie now. He, he's been running in. So you're over a second quicker than Eddie. Eddie's yeah. second fast. Yeah. Yeah. Randy and, at this point, Randy and Freddie are both on 30, 31.94. Both on the exact the same time. That's good. Yeah, it can get quicker yet. Yeah. And after a while. Don't rush it. Practice sessions are uh, not so much just to go out and go round and round. It's, the main thing is to set your machine up because the easier you get your bike to 100%, the easier it is for you and the easier it is to do fast times more consistently for the whole race. So practice is basically understanding the machine and uh, the trick is to be able to understand your machine quickly. My team is the backbone of my racing and the most important thing we have is instant communication. We know each other well and I think that's very important. It means that they can understand me and they can translate quickly what I need as a rider into improving the bike. Way, way too much compression. Every time I go on the corner it's going boom right back at me. At the moment, you're quickest, according to the computer. What, what did I get? I got your 32.97. It's controllable. It's just coming out of this corner. It's real bad. Yeah. This is great. This is so not e It's easy, you know? Yeah, it's still shit. Look at the springs too hard. It's really high up. Yeah. And then bring it down the last, because down low, there's some patches. It's like ice. Yeah. So you touch it, and it's just like ice. It's like it's in, in through this, this, this chicane in the back here, it's too high. It's way up there. What you're saying is oh, we, we don't have to change anything on the bike, it's perfect. <laughs> no, not quite that. The other one, fifth gear, just dirt track, but like, dirt track's all the way around there. Just, oh, this one. Sometimes that's go and sometimes grip, you know what I mean? And yeah. so it's better. I mean, it's nearly all the time a grip's better. I've never yet raced a bike that's been 100%. It's always been, you know, 90 or 95%. percent but never had it yet perfect. I'm always searching for something better and better and better. Probably the worst track of the season for me. We shouldn't be racing here because of the speeds of the bikes now. You're doing probably 120 mile an hour over the top here, and that's no, no room for error. And if you come off, you ain't going to get up and walk away. And to me, that's you know, just too much danger for the enjoyment of the sport. But I've got to race here and get on with it, and I've sort of really got to try and put that out of my mind to a certain extent. display of sensational determined riding after 14 place changes for the lead and running 1.4 seconds in front of Mamola, Gardner takes the chequered flag and is another 15 points closer to the world championship. Yeah, Randy ran incredibly well. I just couldn't shake him off. He stuck with me all the way. But you only have to win by a fraction of a second. That's all it takes. Oh, damn. You gotta look at my voice. 
screen's broken off the year, so it was it. But it was a good ride, eh? Hey? Good race. Yeah? Well, yeah, I think I followed Eddie through there. When uh, he moved into second, he was like, he'd be like five mile an hour faster than me. And he'd go right underneath you. You didn't know he was there. So fast, right on the white line. Probably my biggest threat this year is now Randy Mamola. I sort of disregarded him at the beginning of the season and didn't think he'd be a problem at all. And he's uh, becoming more and more a problem each race there is. And... Listen, listen to the gun. He's got it in his hand. Oh, here it is. It's great, eh? Yeah. So excited. Circle comes out. He's been around for a long time and uh, he's been well known as what they call the bridesmaid because he's never won, he's always second, although this year you might do it, we just don't know yet. <laughs> he's very, very popular with the crowds and he loves to play up to them. He's been racing now for about 15 years, which makes him the most experienced rider on the circuit. Randy takes his riding very seriously, and I know he's very determined to win this year. Been as good as it was here last year? No, no. Oh. Car race like shit. From what the stories that I'm, I'm getting back, uh, he's not coping too well at all. Especially, he's very disappointed in his machine because he says it's not strong enough this year, and not good enough, and not fast enough. But uh, that's good, I want him to keep thinking that. In fact, my bike's not that much faster, there's very little in it, but he seems to think there's a great deal. Despite the problems he's having, he's still the rider I fear the most. You know, too many people are getting hurt because they're trying so hard. I needed to survive the practice, you know? Yes. <laughs> Just considering what happened today. <laughs> sprained a bit. The bike was perfect, but I wasn't even going particularly fast. Oh, I was injured in practice there when I did fall and injured my right hand. It was um, just lack of concentration, too much throttle, too quick, and high side me off the bike. And in fact, I didn't even know what happened there for a while. When I ride a bike, I mean, it's, this is going to sound really strange, and I really haven't told anybody before, but. Um, I come to a corner and I know that I'm going around as fast as I can, but I'm always interested to see what happens if I try a bit harder. And I'm always sometimes silly, you know, in doing that. But, and then, of course, I'll crash and I'll think, oh, I knew I shouldn't have done that. And it's like having an electrical wire on the wall there and I'll say, no, don't touch that. So I'll go and grab it just to see what happens, but I know it gives you a shock. So I'm always, I'm always wanting to find out what, why, why and how. It depends on the sort of fall that you have. If you ever have a heavy fall, then yeah, it does knock your confidence quite a bit. If you've got one or two more sessions left before you actually race, then it's not too bad, because usually you can go out there and settle down and just be smooth again, and usually your times come back to you. Uh, but if it was the last session, it, do, it does knock your confidence around. The hand's greasy, that's why I'm still on. Just a good Australian band-aid. You've got to go to the doctor. to get out and practice because it was my last practice session after a crash and as I said you've got to give yourself time to get back into the swing of things and build your confidence back up so I was in a hurry to get out and he was stopping us and uh, so it come to a few fisticuffs there and I got a little bit aggro <laughs> but he learned his lesson didn't he from picking me up I'm saying put me down Oh, you must move or something you know, in, in Yugoslavian. You must move. I says, put me down. So he put me down, so I bopped him one. I don't know why I did it. I mean, I'm not usually like that, but I did it just yeah, because I... that's what I, I said to someone. I defended us. It's not like playing. No, it's just because I was gaga at the time. I just got up and bopped him one. I thought I was Muhammad Ali. 
He is not going. He must wait here. Yes. The doctor didn't write. No. We have to, okay. to have the... Okay, there. See, this guy knows what he's doing. You don't know what you're doing. Take it easy, Wayne. So the whole day was, uh, it was certainly, it was Saturday the 13th, in fact, so it was a right disastrous day. We've got another battery if you want to try that, but I don't think it is because the valve is working all right. I checked that before It was just one of those days, and we, want, as I said, we wanted to get back out of the track to build more confidence again, and um, just everything didn't work. And I said to Jerry and the lads, I said, just count me out for this day and you know, after the day. And uh, I said, just forget about this one and we'll try again tomorrow. Sensational start with Randy Mavola streaking ahead, very determined to do better than his game second place in Austria. And there's Gardner, about nine tenths of a second behind. Gardner takes the lead with only six tenths of a second between the first three placings. And Eddie's got him. What a fabulous race for the lead as Eddie Lawson, the defending champion, surges into the lead. Mona wheeling it now as he punches it up hard. With enormous speed, Gardner blasts past him and takes the lead again. Gardner again letting the bike work and wriggle and squirm around as he pumps on all the power. And Mamola is second, Eddie Lawson twice past Wayne Gardner and now back to third place. Only nine tenths of a second between this man in first place, Wayne Gardner and Randy Mamola pursuing him. Two riders absolutely on the limit, each producing their best. And this man on bike number two sticking his neck out and doing it better than all of them. And there it is, victory again. Wayne Gardner winning round six in the World Road Racing Championship. His fourth win of the season and a good lead now in the series. My hand was asleep out there, my right hand, I couldn't feel it. Oh. Can you get him? Thank you. Ah, ah, ah pull sorry. Pull it, pull it. Pull it. He won't hurt. He won't ah. hurt me. He won't hurt me. Right, water. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's the last time, I got that. I saved my brake and I went for it. About eight flat from the end. Yeah. yeah. Did you get some back markers? Great stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, John. Okay. Towel. Watch Tremendous, Wayne. the guy I hit. He's the guy I smacked in the face. <laughs> oh, wrong place. <laughs> this one here. Right, okay. You know, into the yeah, straight here. Yeah. Uh, into here. It's just a little bit, feels like it's hard and there's no feel, you know? And a couple of times it sort of goes, you know, that, that sort of bouncing feeling again. So if we can pick the front up a bit. I'm a perfectionist, and with my racing, if everything doesn't get perfect, I sort of look at, look at it from the outside and see what I did wrong and, and try not to do that mistake or try to improve the bike or do something to um, make it a perfect race. I'm sure it wouldn't happen as much, you know what I mean? OK, so we're not chasing a lot in the back then, to be No, the back's not bad. It says...
like Assen because of the atmosphere and the people that go there. The whole town lights up. It's the Dutch TT. It's the sort of race of the year. And in fact, if you're going to win a Grand Prix, it's the Dutch is the one to win. And that's why I was very proud of winning it last year. But uh, there's 180, 200,000 spectators every year. And the track's very flat, so you can basically see the whole circuit wherever you sit. And it's good for the spectators, and they probably around the circuit 50 deep. And uh, it looks fantastic, especially when you can't see the actual rider on the track. You can see where he is by the amount of people standing up and clapping. The red, the red flag, flag has, has gone, gone out, out, and it looks, it looks as, as though the race, the race has, has been stopped. stopped. The red, red flag, flag has, has gone, gone out, out, and it looks as though the race has been stopped. stopped. No, it's, it's not, not my decision, decision. It's, it's the official's decision to stop the race because, because of the rain. rain. There will, there will be, a be a restart in 20, 20 minutes, minutes so that the riders, riders can change tyres. The race, the race will, will start, start again, again in 20, 20 minutes. minutes. The old people were excited, eh? Yeah. And then when we pulled in, they're going, boo, boo. They were quite good humoured on the stand, they were quite good humoured. I thought, shit, why don't they get out on the bike? I mean, I'll pass the leathers and helmet and here's the bike and they can do it. So it's going to be a two leg thing. So you either got to be right up Eddie's exhaust pipe or, or in front of him. Here we go again. Ride at your own pace. Don't, if somebody comes Push past it. you, look look at him. Just have a watch look. Him. You know, watch him. Just watch what they're doing, you know. Yeah. That's what I was doing then. Yeah. The track was getting wet and dangerous, so on the fifth lap, the riders made a decision to stop the race. The race will start in five minutes, and this time the race will not be stopped. The race will not be stopped. Even though Randy took the chequered flag, he was placed third behind Eddie and then myself on combined times.
Jackson Kettle calling the pot black. I mean, on six gears sideways up the back straight. It was just spinning in six gear. Just every corner you go in, you go, whoa, what standing up, you know, in the middle of the corner. Just try to put the power on. Wow, wow. You know? And I just say, hey. I just rode hard enough. I could see when Ren Randy ran wide and then Eddie did. I caught right up to Eddie. Yeah, one time I tried to right stay on. with him, but I couldn't, you know. I would have trailed it. So I just say, hey, what's yeah, the I point? guess the old Yamaha, the power just must have been like a yeah, smoother delivery because. Oh, it's so okay. Eddie's still quite a bit beyond. I'll 21 points once. and Randy's 19 beyond. Randy's 19 now. Yeah. Eddie's 21. So it's still half a wrong breeze, isn't yeah. it? After a good race, everyone's feeling really, really good, and we're all on a high. And yesterday, well, you know, for example, coming second, we're, we're really pleased that he got the points, but it's still not the same. Yeah, it's just not there. You've tried so hard all week to win that race, and when you don't win, you, you're pleased that things have gone the way they have. If, if you have to come second or third, but that's a downer, I think, not winning when you've worked so hard for it. Luke engine problem in Spain and problems getting his bike right for San Marino, he'd have an unbeatable lead. Now, one slip in South America and the championship could be threatened. It was going to be the most important race of, uh, of my career, which is, what, nearly 10 years now. I tried not to play too far out of things of what I usually do. I mean, I tried to keep it in the same sort of rhythm. But I tried to keep uh, my temperament down and not get overworked about it all. You're under pressure all the while, really. I mean, the, the pressure's been this year because we started we started off really well. I mean, we've, we've scored points in every round, which you've got to go back a long way to find anyone that's, that's scored points in every round, you know. So, and, and all of a sudden, we're now, you know, within breathing distance of the World Championship. Obviously, the pressure's got to be there on him, you know. I mean, the, I mean, our job now is to try and take the pressure away from him, you know. Or, or, or to not, not, to not look like we've got any pressure, that's the big thing, is to make it just the same as every other one of the Grand Prix. To us, this is just another race. Everything we've done for all the other races, we've got to do it now exactly the same this time. We've got to appear just the same. It's telling on him, the pressure is getting to him. I always thought Wayne would not be that type, because he's so happy-go-lucky. I thought, no, carefree, no problem. But it really has affected him more than uh, I realised it would. He's become quite more aggressive on and off the track. He's, he used to be very placid, but now he's more um, aggressive and he can get quite angry, <laughs> which he never used to do. <laughs> Eddie and Randy, they're the main rivals, but uh, the, the main priority really was uh, Randy Mamola. Both of them were with a good chance, but of course uh, Randy was in with uh, a much stronger chance. I mean, all I had to do was make one mistake or, uh, you know, maybe have bad weather and not get good results. But the main priority was to finish either one, one place behind Randy or, of course, in front of him. If I finish in front of him, that finished the championship. I really think that the race is going to be between uh, myself and Eddie. And as the past few races, I know that Wayne's backed off in the race. And I think that uh, he'll be a little bit crazy if, if he tried to win. I think just keeping the pressure on him, uh, like we're doing, uh, is, is, is all we can do right now. It's going to be close out there, and, uh, and I'm sure it's going to be a long, hard race. You can trust me to do a good show for the Brazilian public, but uh, as far as the World Championship goes, 
that has to be decided between uh, myself and Wayne. I will try definitely my uh, hardest, 100%, to win on Sunday. Journalists, please evacuate the track. All journalists and people that is around, please evacuate the track. Todos los jornalistas, por favor, dejen la pista. In five minutes, all the journalists and everybody, please, evacuate the train. Gardner surges down the inside so that before the first corner, he's jumped into the lead. Badly away, Mamola desperate to improve his place. Gardner going hard, determined to clinch the championship in this race. The man with the biggest break is our man from Wollongong, leading the championship, leading the race, looking very positive as he tries to grab this title that no other Australian has ever won. The last two laps were probably the, the longest five minutes in my whole life, I'd say, because, uh, you know, since I was a boy, I dreamt of being world champion, and, of course, it came down to those last five minutes of the race is what two laps are. And uh, I didn't want to make a mistake. I was checking everything, of course, the machine, the gauges, uh, trying not to not trying not to think too much of a world championship, trying to think of actually winning the race and concentrating on still what I was doing. And in fact, my, my mind started wandering off, and I had to keep yelling myself, concentrate, you haven't won it yet, you haven't won it yet. Those two laps were the longest of my life and my career. I mean, it was uh, quite nerving, actually. I didn't want to make any mistakes, that was all.
He's out on the 32nd and final lap in this quest for the World 500 Championship, and it really looks to be his. Gardner looking superb. He's done it. The Australian Wayne Gardner is well and truly 1987's World 500 Champion. I felt like my job had come to an end. As I said, I've been building up this career now for 10 years, and it felt like it had peaked and it was going over the other side, and I'd, I'd already done the job and I can relax, and it felt like <clears throat> a great lot of weight had just fallen off my shoulders and the whole thing's been finished now. And uh, it was, I was very emotional, in fact. Uh, it was quite sad in one way that it's all over, but it was also very, very gratifying that I'd actually made become a world champion. Hold it up, That's good photo. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? That's good photo, don't you think, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> what a handsome chap. Look at him. Relations and welcome home, champ. Stop oh, looking at me like that. Donald Chew has been a tower of strength. <laughs> a tower of strength. Over the years. And Keeping problems. And problems, be honest. Keeping you human. And Keeping me in line. Helping me through when things have got tough. Have Most been. importantly, all of these people have believed in me where others haven't. Thank you all. It's good, isn't it? We bring a tear to your eye, doesn't it, mate? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I'm trying to hold back the tears again, tell the truth. Thank you. <laughs> they gave me a hanky. But uh, now that it's all over, I feel very, very proud, and especially I'm ever so proud when I come home and see all this. Uh, I really got to thank you all ever so much, and uh, really just thank you. I'm proud of you, mate.